In the early days of Operation Enduring Freedom, when U.S. soldiers arrived as some of the first boots on the ground, they took critical steps in what is known today as America's longest war. They set out to capture those responsible for the attacks of 9-11 and to help this land become a safer place. It's been 14 years since Afghanistan became a necessary part of American vocabulary. For tens of thousands of U.S. and coalition service members, Afghanistan is now a permanent part of their psyche. For millions of Afghans, the last 14 years represents dramatic change in their lives, their culture, and for the future. I think the American people ought to know they've made a big difference here. People ask me, is it worth it? I, I tell them, absolutely. And if you take a look at any of the measurable statistics, whether it's roads, cell phones, life expectancy, people in school, teachers, jobs, on and on, those numbers continue to go up. And without security and without the sacrifice of our men and women, you know, wouldn't have been there. General John Campbell says his time in Operation Enduring Freedom, like that of many others, set the stage for the follow-on mission, Resolute Support. He acknowledges the changes that have taken place over the years in Afghanistan are dramatic. Afghans today are partners working with U.S. and coalition forces to secure their land, moving forward a little more every day, away from the grasp of insurgents and closer to long-term stability. <laughs> they have taken on this fight. I mean, they own the security of their country. Uh, it's time for them to do that. They're ready. They've done that. They've been in the lead for the last two fighting seasons. They have it for this upcoming fighting season. They continue to need uh, the coalition's help in many areas. Dum, 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 dum. The mission of Resolute Support is to train, advise, assist Afghan National Defense Security Forces, like these military police. What's the point? Yeah. Right now, this is if they're taking contact from the left or the right. So it allows them, right when they take contact, to orient on it, provides, press a fire, then get in the prone so they're in cover. And then that allows them to search for the enemy and then attack onto them. The enemy is primarily the Taliban with its rockets, suicide bombers, and IEDs. The Afghan soldiers, part of the Afghan military police command, are tasked with the security of a nearby prison and the surrounding area. The Marines are part of a bigger task force with the code name SOLID. The Afghans obviously still have a long way to go. It still remains a huge task as a country and as security forces that are going to respond uh, to, in, to our continued involvement. And they're going to need a lot of uh, help for, for many years to come. But they're, they're definitely on the right trajectory. We have another formation called the Wedge, uh, where. One thing I'm very impressed enough. with is yeah. their willingness to receive help, their willingness to learn, their willingness to get better every day. And I mean, that's the first battle that you have to uh, Right, left, front, or rear. Lieutenant Colonel Zach Miller commands Task Force Solid a joint and coalition military presence, 1,700 strong, primarily composed of soldiers from the republics of Czech and Georgia. We're responsible for all of the security on Bagram Airfield, the perimeter, the entry control points, but uh, more importantly, we're responsible for the security outside of the airfield. March! Bagram Airfield remains as the largest U.S. military installation in the country. Drawdown since the end of Operation Enduring Freedom has made its mark, but Bagram still has significant strategic value to the coalition and to its enemies. Lots of rockets, IEDs out in the, you know the, the ground defense area around Bagram. Uh, we've had a couple RPGs shot at helicopters. Uh, we've been direct fire attacks a couple times since we've been here. It's still an area of active hostilities. Yeah, the threat's always present. The security around Bagram is, is pretty good, uh, but you'd always approach it as if it is a dangerous place. I'm not an expert, and I shouldn't you know, speculate too much, but if I was a betting man, they'd say they'd start heading up this way soon enough. Staff Sergeant Eric Penny is on his final patrol. The 29-year-old Marine is an advisor to the ANA who travel with him on his rounds outside the wire. The way I see it, the advisor mission, the best advisor training I've had is being married, <laughs> just learning how to cooperate, negotiate. The Marines and the Georgians are members of Task Force Solid. The ANA comes from the 201st Corps. Together, they conduct what's called a dismount patrol. 
Resolute support gives coalition new meaning. Total coalition troop presence in all of Afghanistan is slightly more than 12,000, coming from 40 nations. A big part of our job is to create a relationship with the Afghan people. And uh, I'll do that as a patrol leader as well with their Georgian counterparts. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, and I'll have my Marines looking out for me. <laughs> the village is called Kali Musapain, located in the GDA, ground defense area, what's known as the Bagram Bowl. Security concerns in the village or around here? The patrols extend over an area that is within striking distance of the enemy, Afghan real estate that is some 300 miles and is home to some 300,000 Afghans. The patrols are daily adventures that take them around the bowl. Each day they walk from three to six miles, depending on the village or town. This mission, I think, sometimes is um, dangerous because you know this is uh, Afghanistan. But, so it's our job, so we are moving as a village with Marines. Marines and Georgian guys are moving, They're, we are moving together, and so it's very interesting sometimes. The interaction with the locals does a couple of things. Establishes a collective security presence and puts Afghan forces out front in the lead, earning the respect and trust of the people. We need the cooperation of people. We want to already should have the, you know, the trust of the people to this uh, their security forces. Interior Minister Nurahag Ulami is a member of the Afghan government. He says it's time for Afghan security forces to include his own police to own the fight. Not give a chance for the insurgency and other to do something. The police, 24 hours, day and night, summer and winter, should be ready for that to do their job is the best. If one second we not care about the people, will will be something that the insurgency doing. The minister and his colleagues are gathered for a demonstration of the MD-530, the warrior version. A close air attack helicopter, the MD-530 is a multi-purpose armed aircraft that gives the Afghan Air Force a serious fighting edge. Defeating their enemies and keeping the country safe and stable is the driving force for Jairoa, the government of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. The Afghan Air Force is viewed as a critical tool in the overall strength of national security. There's about 100 aircraft currently in the Afghan inventory, which means that Afghanistan is literally taking the fight to the skies. Across the country, Afghan aviators are learning the skills of flying, both rotary and fixed wing. The AAF is seen as a vital enabler. If you spend much time out in the wilderness in Afghanistan, if you fly over Afghanistan, uh, what, what you can quickly find is a pretty rugged terrain. So the easiest, most effective, most efficient way to get around is via some sort of a rotary wing or fixed wing aircraft. It also gives them ability to bring fires to the fight. Flying is just the start. Creating an air force from the ground up includes command and control, maintenance, supply. You gotta make sure that the staff knows how to plan a budget so that they can forecast requirements and have the money to pay for it when it gets there. So those are kind of some of the higher order things that perhaps you don't think about that takes time to build that capability so when they step away, they will truly have a sustainable air force. Success is in the wings and not only in the air. Resolute support is set to help Afghanistan on all levels. They've got the combat power. They've got the capabilities. The confidence comes from showing them what they already know to be true, that what they see as the problem is correct, and that they've got the capability to go after solving that problem. And they've had, just in our short time here in the last few months, a couple quick wins with that. Lots of bigger problems to address, however. Colonel J.V. Vowell says the ANA are proven fighters. They have what it takes to defeat the enemy today. The challenge is guiding them to a mindset that embraces what it takes to be ready for tomorrow's fight. In Afghanistan, everything is simple, but the simplest things are difficult. The issue at hand, he says, is getting them to connect the dots.
That's a lot of force generation, getting new soldiers in, training leader development, getting forces on the line, and force sustainment. Just getting the logistics sustainment functions of where do the bullets come from? Where's the food come from? How do I get my vehicle that got blown up, repaired, or replaced entirely with a new vehicle? For U.S. and coalition forces, it's basic military, systems, processes, and approaches that keep an army running. Some of the changes that you guys will see over the next week or so. For many Afghans, the concept of anticipating future needs on a large scale, on a regular basis, is new territory. Sometimes it's, it's hard. Major Adisa King advises at the operations level at the 201st Corps, one of six ANA corps. He says the path to greater understanding is lined with patience and a willingness to step back. We cannot look at Afghans as a U.S. military, but we look how they own the fight and how they get after things and then continue to kind of, I want to say kind of push. Advising, he says, is an art. It's not for everyone. You have to earn the right to sit at the table. Not everybody can advise. Not everybody advisors the same. Resolute Support has advisors in five tacks currently employed across the country. The goal for all is to provide help in strategic functions, areas that keep security forces ready and responsive for the long term. Programming, planning, budgeting, execution is one of our central functions. Transparency, accountability, oversight, rule of law, force generation, intelligence, strategic communications, those type of things we've got to continue to work on. Strengthening national security is at the heart of resolute support. Training advice assist has progressed significantly over the years. What was shoulder by shoulder, hands on training has now evolved into active listening and learning how to say no. Major Scott Steele is an artilleryman loves it. He says progress with the 201st Corps is taking place every day. The primary challenge, as he sees it, is holding back and letting them figure it out on their own. We have to say no a lot and let them learn and develop their own methods and uh, basically SOPs, their standard operating procedures on how to operate. The ANA and artillery are good together. What troubles steel is the big picture. If they are to own the fight, can they keep it up? Tactically proficient, they can fight and they can win battles. But in order, you know, to keep keep that sustainment and to sustain them for over, you know, the next few years and not just this next few months is really the biggest challenge. But with this battle tracking, what does this remind you the of? The big picture and also concerns Captain Lorenzo Suarez. His classroom is the OCCR, Operational Coordination Center Region. His students are Afghan National Security Forces from multiple provinces. They represent the Army and the police. Together, they're tasked with maintaining security in the region around Kabul. They're very good at receiving the information from one guy, hand it off to another, but not really doing much with the information when they first receive it. That's actual battle. The base tracking. of operations is forward operating base Gamberi, home of the 201st Corps. The lesson plan for this class is showing how merging information into a common operating picture, heightening situational awareness, benefits all. Because once they have identified roles and responsibilities, then they know their job they have to do. Everyone knows their, their place on the team, and the team is better overall. Suarez is one of some 60 advisors assigned to TAC East. The OCCR is one of several in Afghanistan. The overarching goal for both is building a force focused on making a difference in the big picture. The landscape for the Train Advise Assist mission is Afghanistan itself. With a population of almost 33 million, recent studies report an increase in economic development, improvements in the lives of women, general living conditions are on the rise, and there is a reawakening of education. This village school is part of a growing presence of learning institutions throughout the country. After years of living in a world where schools were not allowed, Afghans are eagerly sending their children back to school. The courses are basic, the setting is austere, 
but school is back in session. We're told girls are present, but cultural sensitivities restrict getting pictures of them. We are assured, however, that everyone, boys and girls, get all that school has to offer. We don't have mathematics uh, subject teachers, and we don't have chemistry subject, and this uh, uh, section we have uh, problems. Teachers have been promised, but it's not clear when they will arrive. In the meantime, the thirst for knowledge is growing. Danger still exists, but these children will be some of the first to grow up without the constant horror of war in more than 40 years. Afghan people want the same things we do. They want a roof over their head. They want to be able to provide for the family. Uh, they want a job. Uh, the Taliban don't offer, offer that. What they have now is a national union government that is a willing partner as they look toward the future. President Ghani is going after corruption. He's trying, he is a commander in chief. He's taken the, the Afghan security forces underneath his wing. He's looking forward to moving forward and making sure that Afghanistan is a stable, secure environment. Evidence of enduring security and stability are taking shape daily. Here at the new Afghan Ministry of Defense, the construction is almost done. It's down to the finishing touches. What would the capacity be, Mark? Major General Todd Semonite says this building represents a lot to the people of Afghanistan and to the international community. We're doing the right thing here for the Afghans. We're doing the right things for the taxpayers and the right things for the people that are going to own these kind of buildings over here. So it, it really is important. Semonite commands Sistika, Combined Security Transition Command Afghanistan, a resolute support organization tasked with oversight of international donor funds of $5.4 billion. Buildings are just part of the bigger picture. It's not about guns and ammo. It's not about just continuing that a soldier has the ability to fight the war. It's much, much more about systems and processes. Stretching this money so we can get the best value out of those funds and also at the same time build a development of the capacity to be able to continue to program for the future. When finished, the new MOD will consolidate Afghan Army headquarters, currently spread out in some 20 different sites. The point is, is that armies just aren't about fighting wars. Armies are about, if anything else, representing what the country stands for. The merge will position the ANA with stronger leadership, more effective use of resources, and continued development of capabilities indicators of investment seen as constructive by the people and the international community. The point maybe is something to be able to solidify, some type of a, a capability to be able to really let the whole army leadership know that the international community stands behind them, we stand behind their army, we stand behind this country, and we're here. The main task was establishing a secure environment in the BGDA by conducting counter ideas. The investment in Afghanistan is substantial. Over the last 14 years, numerous nations from around the world have contributed troops and money in a global effort to eliminate Afghanistan as a breeding ground for terrorism. These soldiers have executed 750 patrols. So the average Czech soldier in front of you spent more than a thousand hours outside of the wire. I do think about that. I think the question that I normally ask myself, what, what can I add to uh, to the mission that U.S. and the coalition are doing together. Colonel Giovanni Franchini says being part of resolute support is a demonstration of the continued commitment of NATO and his homeland of Italy. The whole purpose of being here, the whole purpose of having a nation like Italy uh, sending his own uh, personnel here is to support that final end. So having a nation like Afghanistan being kind of uh, uh, an example, a positive example for future missions like this one. Franchini works with TAC Air. TAC Air has close to 300 coalition advisors working across multiple platforms to help Afghanistan stand up a capable and effective air force. We want them uh, doing the job. So the real, uh, the effort is having the Afghans being capable of conducting their own mission. In the air and on the ground, Afghan security forces are proving their capabilities. Progress is visible, but it comes at a cost. Call the hospital. 
According to the United Nations, more than 12,000 non-combatant lives have been extinguished in Afghanistan since 2001. Coalition military losses total more than 3,400. The vast majority are American. An additional 19,000 U.S. service members suffer injury, some more obvious than others. For all who have served here in pursuit of national and global security, Afghanistan has left its mark. I, I always remind people that even though it seems like I gave a lot, there's always people giving more. His name is Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie. He served six deployments in Afghanistan. It was on his last rotation when he suffered serious wounds, saving the lives of his comrades. All of the men and women that are still over here continuing our job of... The Army Ranger the became Afghan. the second living recipient of the Medal of Honor from the wars in Iraq uh, and Afghanistan. I, uh, my first deployment was actually in 2002. Petrie is back in six, Afghanistan, six, part of Afghanistan. Operation Proper Exit, the, the a U.S. Part. initiative that brings wounded warriors back to the lands that so dramatically changed their lives. It makes it well worth it knowing that, uh, that it wasn't for nothing. And even, even after my first deployment, I knew that we had made a big impact impact and a difference in the lives of the civilians over here. And having that feeling of knowing that we were doing good and knowing that sometimes it, it costs the shed of blood and, and lives. Just, just from what I've seen in one year's change makes it worth it. It is men like them that guarantee our country has been and forever will be a beacon of freedom. As soldiers, democracy. they stand as examples of and honor and valor. And service in their everyday life. As representatives of a coalition, they are witnesses to the big picture, the effects of the last 14 years, and the ongoing transformation that is sweeping Afghanistan. <laughs>